are these people? The top independent journalist. Now, I have not updated the, the pages. I couldn't get that done yet because I want the same URLs to stay the consistent, and I need to do that afterwards. But this is the these are the 2023 and 22 honorees combined together in the journalism category. And you've got, first of all, John Pilger. We lost John Pilger since since we gave <laughs> We 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 gave him an, uh, an award in at the end of October, and then and then we lost him in in December, and that was a, a monstrous blow. Um, and Consortium News just this week is featuring documentaries of his, and on their on their YouTube page they did a part one and a part two. So by all means, go check out Consortium News. Last month. Mark Curtis from Declassified UK and John's son Sam relaunched johnpilger.com under the Declassified servers and to make sure that all of his work would be preserved. And thank goodness for that. And we really appreciate Mark and his effort in that. Um, and there's the website and still a Twitter that you can follow because his family or whoever manages that um, does post news when there is something featuring John still. Um, but John yep. was a legendary, I mean, legendary investigative journalist who, and supporter of Palestine for his entire life and on the right side of history many, many times. Um, his documentaries are, wow, you know, historic in, in libraries and classes are taught on, on what he's, done and and you know he he's one of the legends out there and he was also by the way a good friend of julian assange and it's beyond a crying criminal shame that he did not live long enough to see julian walk out of belmarsh and they were not able to hug each other and and that's that's a you know one of the sad things but you know um i i i had to of course have have a Zago illustration drawn of, of John and so glad he did that for us. Um, oh, thank you. Um, Ford Fisher news to share the man on the street, the man with the camera, the man behind the camera. You so very rarely see this man, but he's out there like all the time and he's filming raw footage. He films all political sides of the spectrum. It doesn't matter left, right, he just wants to get the footage and to capture what was happening live and let you make your own decision about what you're seeing. And I appreciate that. That's what journalism actually is. You know, um, it's pointing a camera and, and providing some kind of context, but at the same time, showing people what's actually happening, not just telling them what you think is happening. So I give a lot of credit to... Yep forward and news to share great stuff he's also and if you share any of his stuff ever try to credit him it shouldn't be that hard you know well at might, news to share throw that in there he might claim you if you don't too so that that too and he has every right to he works hard for that footage yes he does so. um, news to share is also affiliated with matt taibbi's racket news who I think we might even see him coming up soon. But this guy we certainly talked about a lot this year on How Do We Miss That? TJ Hopkins. I might have even shown this Zago illustration a couple weeks ago. TJ just had a Kafkaesque trial in Germany, and we've been covering his trial for about a year and wow, a half. Wow, Kafka. Now. Yeah, wow, well, Kafka. Look at you being cultured. Right? <laughs> well, it kind of feels like he's on trial, and... He, and he's basically been convicted Us already. newbies call that Lynchian. Well, <laughs> well yeah. he's been on yeah, trial yeah, yeah. and for publishing a book cover, very famously. Uh, you can see, go back and watch all the C.J. Hopkins clips on How Do We Miss That? There's about five or six of them from when he was first uh, told that he would be arrested and jailed if he didn't pay a fine and go to court. And then he was acquitted. And then the German prosecutor um, appealed the acquittal. 
which in the United States couldn't happen because of double jeopardy, but apparently in in um, Germany, they can do that. Uh, they did not like that he had published a swastika very faintly on a uh, surgical mask in defiance of the German, you know, to try to compare what the German measures under the COVID-19 restrictions were and the narrative that had built up around that compared with the narrative around compliance with Nazi Germany. And it wasn't an unfair uh, comparison, and he had done so, and it was not promotion of Nazi propaganda, which is what they have accused him of and now convicted him of, amazingly enough. He is now a convicted hate speech felon in Germany. How nice, right? And that links to his website, cjhopkins.com. I meant to be able to blow that up, but apparently I didn't do that. He is also very active on Substack Publishes. He works with Off Guardian. His website is consentfactory.org, so definitely go support and check out CJ. He's a salty crank, and I love him, even even though he's he's tough as nails. and he, yeah, no, he's Nobody's right on everything. Look, you know, everybody's got their issues. Yeah. Every, but what? Go ahead. But plenty of people are right on everything. But, you know, they never get it either, so. Well, uh, except but, for me, but I'm kidding. You know. He's he's done some good stuff. Yes. You know, independent. Yes, for sure. This guy He will most likely continue to do good stuff. I I would I would hope but, so. You know. But this guy, I, I think most of you know who he is. We've also covered a lot of his articles on our show in the last three years. That's why he earned one last year when he had started Racket News a couple of years before, left um Rolling Stone very famously, wrote on his own as EK News for a while, then decided to turn it into a full-fledged outlet and bring on other writers after the Twitter files, very famously. The limited hangout, yes, that Elon Musk handed him, Barry Weiss, Michael Schellenberger, Alex um, Berenson, and several other writers snippets of what was requested about internal communications at Twitter prior to Elon Musk taking over during the Jack Dorsey era about censorship, about their coordination with the U.S. government. He has since worked with Undead FOIA to recreate and rebuild the, the, the um, Twitter files in reverse in something called the FOIA files that are filling in some of the gaps that Twitter did not necessarily give them or answering things or getting information they the Twitter didn't have about the US government's communication both with Twitter as well as with other entities around censorship around the 2020 election and other issues like covid that they went after and, and others so you know Matt some people he's he's controversial in a way a lot of people you know he was famously yep. called in front of Congress in 2023 to testify about the Twitter files. And then the, they sent the IRS to his house to try to intimidate him and, and back off of that kind of reporting. And he didn't. And, and thankfully, you know, he's kind of stuck to his guns. Now I would say that I'm a little disappointed with his lack of coverage about Israel Palestine, but he's been challenged about that. And his point is, is that, he doesn't feel like he could bring anything unique to the table. It's not his issue. He's not an expert in it. He would rather rely on other people's areas of expertise, and he wants to stay in his lane, which I understand. And nah, okay. Okay. You know, you gotta, it, it just, I respect it. You know, you, respect it or not, that that's his decision. That's fair. Um, but I, I respect that he at least answered the question and wasn't didn't just hide from it and not address it at all. Because there's plenty of those too. All right. Julian Conley is one of the writers over at Common Dreams. Does outstanding work. Go support Common Dreams. They're really in trouble and struggling for funding right now. So give them a, a follow. And if you can support them in any way, a lot of the people here already do. 
And there's so many people to support. That's part of the problem with independent media is there's only so many people, so many outlets that each of you can potentially possibly watch and support. So I get it. And we all get it. And we're so grateful for anything that anyone can do to support. Um, Common Dreams is one of the few outlets now. I, I have not been crazy, honestly, about a lot of their coverage, but they certainly have covered strikes. They have covered the progressive left, and they certainly challenge Democrats as in there aren't very many larger publishing print outlets. There's Off Guardian and several, and they're all, all here, Unlimited Hangout, that of that size that are nonprofit that publish on a daily basis with a staff of writers that push much harder than these guys. And I, I give them a lot of credit for that. Even And I challenge them when yep. they're weak. We've had we've had Brett Wilkins on. Yep. Like I think twice. So you did pretty good work. Right? So 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 Julia, Common Dreams. Go ahead. Who's the other one I'm thinking of? Uh, uh brain work. Brett uh, Wilkins. I don't know if we've had anyone else from Common other Dreams. One. Have we had Common we Dreams? Anyone on, but I've used the we've used their stuff before. Oh Jake Jake Johnson. We've used plenty of Jake Johnson. Name. That's it. Um Yep. John, John Qualey, I read an article of his just last week on the show. We've used a lot of common dreams. Yep. Um, Tariq Haddad was an, a, a big Assange supporting writer who's actually writing a book about the Assange case. And that's why he yep. earned an award last year for, for journalism. So uh, he reached out earlier this year. He barely checks his Twitter. It's like he didn't even realize that, you know, we had done this last year. And it's like, wow, that's really cool. Thank you. Really appreciate that. That's that's awesome. Um, but I'm working on this book. So mm -hmm. here's here's a, a friend of the show, friend of the network, and um, friend of Julian Assange, Stefania Marizzi, Italian journalist, not Tar Reed's um, twin, although a lot of people think that they are separated at birth. They do look right. similar. She's, she's as good as they get. Um, he has been reporting on and trying to get leaks and submitting FOIAs in nine, eight or nine different countries to try to assemble what the governments were doing um, and how they were persecuting and trying to chase Julie into the ends of the earth and expose that. Her book is fantastic. Right. If you've not read that, you should. And, and there's her Amazon bio. You can pick it up there. She's written articles for, for Il Fatto Quotidiano, which is an Italian uh, Quotidiano. Quotidiano. All right. She's on Twitter occasionally. She's got her own website that she's published to in the past. But right now it's it's IFQ that's really where she's been publishing. And she interviewed Stella recently. I think she was one of the first people actually to interview Stella after the the Pace uh conversation last month. Stella! All right. Another outstanding independent journalist who we saw publish a crazy expose just this week about the CIA intending to to monitor Gaza is Dan Cohen from Uncaptured Media. Uh, Dan was working with Mint Press. He was working with Abby Martin. He went off on his own and took a shot. He recently became a father, I think, last year. Um, frequently appears on Redacted as a guest host, uh, not as a guest host, but as a you know guest pundit, talking about he's talked about a lot about Haiti, and and also reported uh, on Palestine, Global South, and a lot of anti-imperialist stories really in the last few years. So yeah, there's there's Dan. So again, all these illustrations are by Zago Brothers. On every page, you'll have a link to be able to find Zago because I want to give them their due credit. Zay Lucio did, again, beautiful work. Dave DeCamp. I love the, the kind of the kind of Mr. Potato Head beard a little bit in the way, you know, like the, 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 the I love how he did that. They look, the illustrations look incredible. For those who don't know, Dave DeCamp does anti-war news with Dave DeCamp on a five day a week live stream show basis. They're on Rumble. They're on YouTube. Shows about a half hour long. Goes through the stories on antiwar.com. Mm -hmm. 
Antiwar.com also will be in here for 2022 as an outlet. We're just going through the journalists from 22 and 23. All right. Um, Antiwar's News with Dave DeCamp is also a podcast, which you can listen to on Apple Podcasts and Spotify. You can see I've got that linked, as well as the antiwar.com website. And he publishes and writes nice short stories that Reef can cover very quickly on INN News. And Colin, and we all can. Very nice. Very nice. Thank you, Dave. Thank you, Dave, really. Um, this guy Appreciate also it. has been incredibly outspoken inside the White House press room and challenging Count Smirkula, Matt Miller, and challenging Vedat Patel, you know, Fat Sagar, and, and all of the State Department and White House clowns, um, even Corinne Jean-Pierre, the, the extremist, um, Sam Husseini. And he recently did an interview, a sit down with, with Fiorella on her Rumble channel. Please, by all means, go check that out. Fiorella, of course, also 2022 Indie Media Award honoree. So Sam is independent and has been for like 25 years. He's on all these different platforms. He also publishes to Substack. So you can check him out all these different places. Check out Sam Hussein. Gordon Dimack, friend of the show. I love this guy. I adore this guy. A fighter for Julian Assange, like big time. Um, and he's doing TikToks now. Now he's over on TikTok and Telegram because I think he's gotten censored off of everywhere else. Um, he's also got a YouTube channel. I don't think he publishes to his Rockfin anymore, but I've got every channel I could find him on out there. Go check out Hook Up and and follow Gordon and support him. A British British journalist makes videos, writes about world news, and uh, again stood out there and protested and fought for Julian Assange's freedom from outside the mm -hmm. the Belmarsh prison and the Old Bailey and. Everywhere they, 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 there was a trial or anything that was held for Julian. The human chain around Parliament, I know he was very famously there as well. Uh, Gordon, we could always count on to be there and cover the story as an independent. All right. Yes, sir. Here, here's our friend Shanda. Hi, Shanda. Why are you going to be weird like that? Huh? Well, well, uh -huh. because because it it means even more this year that we had already recognized Shanda for her outstanding work, and now Shanda needs our help, and Shanda's our sister, and Shanda's fighting a battle, and she's kicking cancer's ass already. But she was diagnosed with small cell lung lung cancer in August, and uh, and this entire community has rallied around her, and and we love her, and we've been her team and her support network behind her and her advocates and Amber from Roar Media and Oz has been there every step of the way. Um, and, and Oz, I'm guessing will be the next slide that I, that I choose. Um, Shanda has a GoFundMe set up. If you had not already donated or known about it, I'm guessing Reef can probably drop the link in there. We're we're on our way to raising her thirty thousand dollars, if not more. She's gonna need it. Uh, she will be on November fourth, starting both radiation and chemo. Her next treatment. She had three days last week. It kicked her ass, and then she kicked its ass. And she's gonna be do. She did a show last night. You would never know that she had been going through any of this. She's just a fucking superstar at a champ, and and we love her so much. And and wow. Shanda is the co-host of Beauty and the Boomer. She is the host of Trailer Park Pundit. She had a show to hell and back with pasta that talked about recovery that was really in-depth and, and you know, she had to reveal a lot of personal stuff in there and a ton of credit and just, you know, immaculate professional. They do amazing work. She and, she and Oz on Beauty and the Boomer. Linda over on, over also with Roar Media. Um, so, so that's Shanda, and then of course my brother Oz, the Boomer Lefave, producer extraordinaire, behind the scenes, 
A lot of people know him and love him. He's the host, the co-host of Beauty and the Boomer with Shanda, of course. And uh, but he also produced a lot of the live streams that you watched in 2021, in 2022, in 2023. And you didn't even I know. I love Oz. We all love Oz. But but uh, he was he was behind the scenes making making the decks and running the live streams and chats for the the creators that that we know and love and. He's he's awesome. Um, when I'll tell you a story sure. when when Tara when Tara Reed uh, found out that her podcast would no longer be continue with RT in again March of 2022, it was Oz who stepped up and offered to help set up a live stream for Tara and says, "What are you guys going to do? How are you going to do that?" And helped us kind of figure out how are we going to to help Tara and produce a show for her, an interview show that was high quality professional. The work this man puts in every week on his AI thumbnails, you, you, you don't even realize just how much uh, I'll gush a little bit and he, he'll be modest and humble about my bragging about him, but I'm going to do it anyway. Um, he is selfless and a worker and he gives a crap about people and he puts the time in and I just, I can't say enough about Oz really. He's, he's one of the best people in this space. And I wish there were a thousand Oz's. The world would be a lot better place if there were even one more Oz. So um, yeah, go support Oz beauty and the boomer. I'm sure he would say to support Shanda in her GoFundMe because fuck cancer. Yeah. We're going to, and we're going to be cancer um, and, and we're going to win. So Aww. this guy is recently back on the scene. He took a nice hiatus uh, after he got his Indie Media Award last year. Um, that was not by design or anything, but I kept begging him, hey, come back, man. We need you. And just around 2024 election time, I guess he decided that he wanted to. He he appreciated the the illustration and uh and, and appreciates you know being honored and recognized as one of the tops, which I, which I appreciate him. He's one of my personal favorites. Also like Laura, um, he asks excellent questions. He tweets out some great stuff and he's on Instagram. Follow Primo radical. He used to be Primo nutmeg originally, and then changed to Primo radical a few years ago. He's interviewed just about everybody that you've watched and a ton of different indie media award honorees. Just this week, he just published a couple of interviews with somebody about the Great Reset, as well as the mm -hmm. Socialist Equality Party candidate running for president, Joseph Kishor. Interesting, fascinating discussion. Mm -hmm. I encourage everyone to go watch that if you're interested in watching what that guy had to say. I kind of was. Um, so that's Primo. You can find him on all of these different platforms. All right. And then we've got Randy Credico. Wow. You want to talk about another legend. All right. Randy hosting shows, supporting Julian Assange, and he ran a billboard truck in DC and New York City, all around the city, raising awareness and getting people and talking to people about what was happening to Julian and getting people angry and speaking about it. All right. And Wow, he he did a ton of a ton of this. Uh, again, after 14 years, his mobile project had come to an end. I'm old in the tooth, and the tank is empty. And that was a couple of weeks ago. Um, because you know Julian's out. But it, look, we still want to fight for a pardon. But a lot of that work, we, we we're tired. Randy, 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 we love you, Randy. <laughs> Randy. I love it. I love that you got that sound bit. That's <laughs> awesome. I know you've been waiting for that. Yep. Um, all right. Then, of course, we've got Nico. All right. Nico, who founded Mikasa Sukasa Network, which is one of the original. Nico is on another level. Which is one of the independent networks that INN was modeled after, which is a bunch of independent creators that had their own channels and following and coming together would form kind of like a super friends group 
that would help and amplify each other. And that was the thought and concept behind me, Casa Sukasa. And it, you know, it evolved over time. And Nico evolved over time. And then he started, you know, Mikasu Casa evolved and Fiorella went to RT and the Convo Couch went its way. Fee. And, hey, Fee. Yes. And everybody kind of went their ways. Nico had to figure out what's next for Nico. And he took a little bit of a break and he came back with Hotspot. And he's been doing these, these great videos with Hotspot and creating a brand new media outlet there and working towards that. Okay, and you can find him, of course, on all these different platforms. And we had Lucio make illustration of him, of course, again, Zago Brothers. Nico is over on Twitter, Instagram, Telegram, TikTok. Of course, he's got a YouTube channel, too. I don't know why I'm you missing his stop. YouTube channel. All right. Yes, and, and Adam Ayers points out that Nico was actually inspiring back during the DNC lawsuit. He goes all the way back there to... Um, to the Beck lawsuit against the DNC in uncovering the DNC saying that they could go into a back room, smoke filled back room, choose a candidate. And that's completely legal and within their rights to do so. And guess what just happened? Hey, how about that? <laughs> the next guy yep. is another one of the indie independent media Alliance members, along with Steve and many others. Uh, Charlie Robinson, who is also the, the host of Macroaggressions podcast, as well as um, the, um, he's a member of Union of the Unwanted. Okay. He's written a couple of books called one, The Octopus of Global Control. I think he's working on his next book now. He had a TNT radio show for a while, but of course, TNT radio is no longer on the air. I need to update that. But you can, you can download, yep. listen to his Macroaggressions podcast, which he puts out weekly or a couple times a week. And again, on Rockfin, on all the podcast platforms, he's on Telegram as well. Charlie's great dude. Great dude. Looks and goes deep on stuff. Corbett Report, speaking of going deep, the one who may go the deepest and another member of the Independent Media Alliance is, is the Corbett Report. And James, I, I really appreciate because he's always going focused. Deep, and we're going hard. Oh, God. He's focused on solutions. Um, focused on not just complaining about what's going on in the world, but what can we do? What can we, how can we fix it? What can we, how can we work around it? So big, big fan of Corbett Report, if you're not following them already. He's on Substack. Yep. They have a website directly that you can subscribe to. You know, direct supporting these, these creators off any other platform is the best way to go. That's, I think, what the Independent Media Alliance is also gearing towards so that they can't be shut down by any entity and by any platform. That's the idea. Okay. And then we've got a podcaster by the name of Political who shouts out a lot of political protest music. This was a, um, a nomination last year by Jesse Jett. He actually featured Jesse on the podcast, but he features a ton of protest music. David Rovix, for example, has been featured many times on Polyrical. And and like we said, we shout out the unknowns, the people that don't necessarily get all the visibility but do incredible work. Polyrical would certainly be uh, in that category. So by all means, go support and follow Polyrical. They're a member of the Moving Train Radio family of podcasts. Yep. All right. And again, we're still in 2023. We've got our Racket News outlet made up of ORF. I don't know. Did I? I didn't see ORF yet. Oh, no, because we haven't gotten to the video creators yet. ORF, Ward Fisher, and Matt Taibbi. All right. And then there's all the Racket News links and their logo as well. All right. Then we've got Aaron Brockovich. You know, most people would say, Aaron Brockovich? One of these creators is not like the other. Maybe. Mm -hmm. Maybe. However, all right, Aaron started a Substack three years ago to no fanfare and just started writing with a, with a, a co-publisher, a woman by the name of Suzanne Boothby, and reporting about what's happening with Flint and what's happening with Jackson, Mississippi, and what's happening with water issues all over the country. 
And few outlets the Ohio do that. stuff, I think, right? She talked about East Palestine and she went there. Few outlets do that. Few people do that. And, you know, I don't know if how many people remember or were alive in the 90s. She was the subject of a famous movie starring Julia Roberts with by her name, you know, called Aaron Brockovich. She's a, she was an activist and she worked for a lawyer and she helped identify problem in in California with PG&E contaminating the water and giving the residents of Hinkley, California cancer. And they got a huge settlement payout to which she was, she earned seven figures herself. She got a huge bonus for it. That, that was not, that was the end of the movie. That was real. So she's able to hold people accountable above the corporate sphere. And she does. And she really points out what's happening with water. And she, again, like Corbett, provides solutions. How do you filter your water? Where do you go when your town is wrecked? She provides resources for that. So big fan of uh, of Aaron. Not Julia Roberts, but Aaron Brockovich. Although she famously said, they're called boobs, Ed. And that, that's like one of my favorite they're lines. Called boobs, Ed. Right. But the Brockovich Report at BrockovichReport.com is definitely a subscribe worthy publication and on and you know worthy of honors. Off Guardian is one of the one of my favorite dissident outlets, by all means. Um they don't get they're completely deboosted. For a while they had like one of those dangerous link things put up for them on Twitter and They've been the victims and targets of a lot of censorship because their name is off Guardian because there's they print stuff that you would never find in the Guardian because the Guardian is shit propaganda, right? Yep. Kit Knightley and Pat Black are the co-founders. There's Kit. All right, like I said, Kit Cabello. There was there is another. There's a Kit, the third Kit. He he wants to get Kit Clarenberg, Kit Cabello, and Kit Knightley on a Kit Street. Yeah. Kit, Kit cubed, right? What a cat. Kit to Kit the cubed. third party. Now, we also have our our friend Orf, right? Orf, who we all kind of learned about and met a couple of years ago, probably through the Bernie years. He famously put together a compilation video of Bernie that went super viral. But he's been putting together compilation videos for the last few years, and he works with Racket News, but he also has his own Substack where he writes and publishes. He does live streams and exposés. He did a couple of articles just this week, so give him a follow, support him. I love the uh, the illustration that, that that Zago did of his. Um, but yeah, that's Orf. News to share, we mentioned earlier, that's Ford Fisher's outlet that he started. So give them a follow and support. Case Study QB. This guy watches all the footage that nobody else wants to watch. And man, this guy's got to have like a bottle of Alka-Seltzer or something sitting right next to his, his wherever he, he watches. I could not watch the level of corporate media that he consumes in order to call out and identify the monstrous shit that they say. And it's a valuable service. And many of the live streams we watch use case study QB clips. And that's why, again, as a video creator, I felt like he was more than worthy. Uh, he also does his own live streams. I don't know how often he's been doing them lately. He set up a sub stack, but I don't think he publishes there yet. But mostly they're on YouTube and you can watch them, you know, watch their clips put out there on, on the YouTubes. All right. Um, then who's next? Who's next? My brother, my brother, Joe, I miss Joe. Joe, a lot of you know, Joe, Do you hey, know, Joe? Joe, that Joe, it's me, Joe. Reef knows Joe. Reef helped recruit Joe to INN. You. Joe is the one INN member that is an Indie Media Award honoree because I, I felt so strongly about his work and his body and the, the body of work that he had done in the two years that he was doing this, that he had earned it. And then literally the week that we, that I told him, he said, you know, I'm 
kind of lost my taste for this and I'm done. And I'm going to put out my swan song video and I'm out and dropped the mic and left and came back for a minute in February and said hello and disappeared again. But he's welcome back anytime. I love the man. That, I don't know if any of these TikToks are still up. I think they might have all been taken down. His Twitter is still <laughs> up. His Twitter is still yep. up. Let's see. Let's see. Is this YouTube gone? somehow is still yep. up. Couldn't find this account. What, yep. a, what a surprise. By the way, INN's YouTube was also taken down. Yeah. Couldn't find any of these TikTok, accounts. You mean? Yeah. Uh, yes. INN's TikTok. That's right. Not YouTube. Sorry. Um, he also has, he's on Substack, but he Tick doesn't publish there. Toe. A winner. I put a couple of his videos that I had in my library on INN's Substack to get out there to our database of email subscribers because it's just such great stuff. I actually published a video of his this week that I found about Anna Kasparian and Cenk Uger talking about kissing politicians' asses, which I thought was especially fitting this week around election time. So it had never been put up to YouTube, so I hit publish on it, and we all got kind of nostalgic and reminiscent of for Joe. And anytime he wants to come back, I love that guy. Go child, go go follow his Twitter, and you'll see a collection of some of the funniest damn videos and and memes you can you can imagine. Here's another one of my favorites, and a friend of the show, friend of the network, does hilarious videos. Turncoat Don. Everyone loves Turncoat Don. Turncoat is a big Taibi and Greenwald fan, Jimmy Dore fan. He has famously kind of spliced independent media figures in CNN and corporate media uh, kind of views to make it look like they're talking to somebody on corporate media on one of their shows and saying stuff that people would never be allowed to say on corporate media. They're great. I love doing that. I love when he does that. He tries to keep his videos under two minutes and 20 seconds. He does also have a YouTube channel, but Turncoat Don, who, and I, I turned to Zago and I'm like, look, man, this guy used a South Park character as Mr. Garrison as his avatar on Twitter. How the hell are we supposed to represent that on? He's like, I'll just draw. I'll he's just like, how about, how, about I just, how about I just like make it just a black room? I'm like, in that same style? I'm like, I said, he saw that. He sent me that. I just, I, it fractured me. It killed me. I love I love the look. It looks great. Again, Lucio Zago, Zago Brothers, incredible artwork. This guy. A lot of people don't know him. Ryan Graham, the Independent Review. The Independent Review is actually a a weekly compilation that started a year and a half ago. Ryan. Ryan Graham. Make Graham. sure you pronounce that perfectly so it doesn't get confused with someone else. Graham. You know, um, every Friday on the AM wake up channel, but he also has all of his own channels. He started doing this about a year and a half ago. I saw it right from the first episode that he started putting these together and he compiles kind of the best of independent media every week from Derek bros and AM wake up and Whitney Webb clips and T lab clips. And amazingly this enough, I N N news, I N N clips. He'll the show how do we miss that there. sometimes just, Wow, I'm so yep. honored to be included with, you know, to have our stuff included with what I consider to be some of the best of the best in independent media. And he consistently puts it out every Friday. It's about a three hour live stream. And then at the end of the stream, he jumps on with Steve and they do a little stream yard live. Um, you can follow him and support him on all these channels. Uh, again, I've been a supporter and a fan of Ryan's and I got what he was trying to do in amplifying the independents that don't get the visibility but are doing the best work. So he's kind of like the video complement in a way to what independent left news was. He puts together like the, a clip live stream about three hours. So go follow him and go support that and you'll be able to get in three hours some of the best clips across independent media every week. E Here's our friend Post Duopolist who yelled at me and said what the hell did you do put me on this list? I don't belong here. Guess what, bro? You do. You do. You put up awesome clips and and you help them go viral and call out some of the people that need to be called out. And once again, they go did it up with their logo, which is just orange and and a elephant and a donkey shitting on the country, which is legit with a gun held to their head. That's 
pretty pretty legit and and pretty descriptive of what's going on in this in this world right now. Uh, that's our friend Dirtbag Left One, Dirtbag Leftist or Post Duopolist. You can follow him over there. He's only on Twitter. That's the only place you can find him. I've asked him, hey man, have you shut up anywhere else? Nope. That's where he wants to be. That's it. So give him a follow. Okay, so that's that's our outlets. Um then I want to go back to the awards and go to our 2022s. Where are we? We're at 11.45. All right. No, I think we're articles, good. Articles, yeah. I think we're good. I think that's, hey. that, that's more than enough. There's a bunch more. Again, you can go and look at them by category here. You can look at them by year underneath 2020. All the 2023s and all the 2022s are right there. I will build one for 2024 that hasn't been made yet. It will be. I'll have to be working on this site the next day or yep. so, and you'll see this updated uh, much better. There are over 120 illustrations that we had done between logos and faces, and just incredible. We we even asked um, Lucio to to do all the INN members. Um, the white that you see around my head tonight is is a is a Zago Brothers illustration as well. Let's one more time. Make a plea. You saw all this incredible artwork. You paid for that. Thank Money, you. Please. Right? Cash app. Kofi. Two best ways to do it. PayPal. Patreon. If you're able to subscribe monthly. Also at innnewsletter.com. INN Newsletter is great. Because uh, you're going to get a daily update of everything that's going on at the network. That's live streams. Articles. Clips also that are put out from those live streams every day. Just about. 